Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and out of the park baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I am here with a, yet another game from our 1995 season for the Chicago White Sox. Now, I will recap this quickly. I'll go over this for people who are not in the know and you might be just watching this um, for the first time. We're in the 1995 season of Out of the Park Baseball. It is a 1994 playthrough and we are in 1995. We've already played 1994 and I had the White Sox in the World Series in 1994 and we lost to the Houston Astros in seven games. So we are now in 1995 and we are nearly at the end of the 1995 season and as you can see uh, down here in the standings we are 78 and 75 and 18 games out of first place and as you can see over here by this note the Indians have won the Central Division of the American League so we are not going to be the winners of the American League. The Indians will be, and uh, you know, I guess well deserved. They're 96 and 57. So let's go back and well, let's look at the uh, standings. And so here are the standings for the entire major league of baseball in 1995's out of the park which as many of you will know is fictional it's you know there could be a lot of players on different teams there could be made up players on different teams i'm sure our team is no ex exception in fact it isn't um but uh, we are 78 and 75, and we are in the middle of a series against the Twins. We just smoked the Twins in the first game of the series. Uh, I think it was something like 13 to 3 was the final score. As a matter of fact, we can check that. We go here, and uh, I thought we had a uh, an option to check the uh, previous game, uh, but I guess we don't. So anyway, uh, but the final score of that game was 13 to 3 or somewhere thereabouts. And we are just playing out the string is what we're doing. And also for people who this might be the first time you're watching my 1994 um, Chicago White Sox playthrough. I am just the manager of the White Sox and out of the park, I uh, especially with the, the more current teams, the teams in the modern era where, um, you know, salaries and salary caps and all that kind of stuff happen, I uh, generally don't serve as the general manager for the team because, you know, I just don't like to get involved with the financials and, you know, I try to sign somebody or trade for somebody and then... The, the thing tells me I can't do that because I don't have the budget to do it. and It's all kinds of stuff I don't like to deal with. So I'm just the manager. I only manage the team on the field. I run the team. I do what I can with what the general manager of the team gives me. And um, we'll just take a quick look at my managerial record and then we will get on with this game. I promise there is a game coming, but here we go with the manager history. So as you can see there in the first year in 1994, I was 89 and 73 and uh, we went to the World Series and lost it four games to three. And now I am 78 and 75. And as I say, I am riding out the string. So we are playing the Minnesota Twins, who are the worst team in our league and probably the worst team. Let me see if they are the worst team in Major League Baseball. Um, it would appear that they are. Only barely, they are only barely worse than the Colorado Rockies. But they are. They're 53 and 100. And so with that, let's get on with this game. So here you go. We've got uh, our lineup on the left-hand side. We are visiting the Twins. 
Uh, this will be in target field. Uh, you can see our lineup is Tim Raines in right, Nunnally in center, Frank Thomas, Big Frank, the Big Hurt is at DH, uh, Julio down by the schoolyard, Franco at first base, Ventura at third, Johnson, who is fighting through some kind of nagging injury, is going to be the left fielder. Fermin will be at second, Guillen is at short, and Carco Weiss will be the catcher, although you can see he is winding down and getting tired. And Jack McDowell is on the mound for us today. Big Jack, Black Jack McDowell, he's pitched in 31 games. He's had an 11-6 and record and a 428 earned run average with an unimpressive 151 whip. And for the Minnesota Twins, their lineup will be Alex Cole in center field, uh, Tucker at DH, uh, Bo Bosali, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. I don't even know if he's real, but he's at first base. Then you got uh, Pinion at right field, Douse at third base. Well, part of his problem might be he's got a whole bunch of made up players because I never heard of these guys. Uh, Pat Mears I have heard of, and from what I heard of him, he wasn't good. Uh, Darren McCarty in left, Wallbeck at catcher, and Anderson at second base. Pitching for the Minnesota Twins today will be Scott Erickson. He was real, and he pitched 33 games so far in this 1995 recreated out of the park season with an 11 and 15 record and a 460. Earned run average with a slightly better than McDowell 146 whip. So we'll see if we can beat up on Erickson or not. And let's get this game started with that. So I'm going to say swing away. We have uh, Erickson out there on the mound and Tim Raines is at the plate. And you can read all the various things. We come into this uh, game with a 263 team batting average. They're coming in with a 271 batting average. And there it appears to be a ground out. So there's one down quickly. And uh, up at the plate is John Nunnally. We have scored 789 runs as a team. And they've scored 709. And that looks like it's going to be a double for Nunnally. So we got a man at second with one down. And up at the plate, Frank, Big Frank, is coming up. Uh, we have 166 home runs on the year to the Twins' 112. And uh, this is one guy who's been responsible for a lot of that, but he's going to take a walk. Now we got two on with one down and Julio down by the schoolyard, Franco. And Franco rips a nice base hit. Let's see if we can score a run on that. Um, let's see. I'm going to say yes. We're going to try. We're going to try to score that run. And Nunnally does come across and score the run. So we're up one nothing with only one out so far. And Robin Hyventura. And he's going to ground out into a double play. And so... That is the inning. We only got one run there, but you know what? We got the one run. So uh, McDowell is going out to pitch, and let's take a look at these. the rest of these statistics. Um, the team ERA for us coming into this is 470. For the Twins, it's a very unimpressive 569. Our bullpen ERA is 495, and theirs is 515. And... Um, Team defense is only a 669. That can't be right. Um, I don't know what that is. It can't be team defense because a 669 fielding percentage would be getting nobody out. So um, we're going to go uh, back to the field of play with McDowell dealing to Alex Cole. Now, Alex Cole, of course, he's a speedy guy. And he is going to lead off with it. Did we make the play? Yes. That was a nice diving play in center field. And so McDowell is going to deal to Michael Tucker. And he walks Michael Tucker. So there's a man aboard with one down. And Jason Biosaleal. 
I don't know how to pronounce his name, but did Karkovice throw this guy out? No. He did not. So, there is a man at second base. And, um... Or is there? I can't see the, uh... Oh, no, I guess he did get him. So, there is two down, and, uh, and William Pinion, I guess you would pronounce that, Pinion, is up. And he's out, and we get out of it unscathed, and we take our one nothing lead to the second inning. Would really like to win this game, improve my um, managerial record. Erickson is back out there. But he's going to get a leadoff ground out for one down quickly. And uh, for Mean up, Felix for Mean playing second base for us. I know he was uh, normally a shortstop, but he's at second base for us a lot. He has played both positions. But we also have Gian, and Gian has to play occasionally, you would think. And with two down, that's going to be a fly out to center, it looks like, and that is exactly what it is. We go to the bottom of the second in a one nothing game. And Andy Dows, the third baseman, is going to be up against Black Jack, and that should be a ground out to Fermin, and it is. One down quickly, and Pat Mears is up. I remember Pat Mears wasn't a very good hitter, but right here he does get himself a base hit to center field for a uh, Twins base runner here in the second with Dave McCarty. It's Dave McCarty, not Darren McCarty. I didn't, uh, hmm. There really was a Darren McCarty. Maybe he played hockey. I don't know. But Matt Walbeck, the catcher, is up with two on. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> For mean drops the relay throw, and so everybody is safe. And the twins have the bases full of twins. And um, we are going to be pitching to Jason Anderson. There is one out, so if we get a double play, that would be really good. Or even a shallow pop out to center field would be great. And uh, they're going to try to score, and they are going to make it. So they do tie the game up, but the fly out represented the second out of the inning. And that will be the third out. And so we go to the top of the third inning, tied at one in this AL Central 1995 slugfest between the Twins and the White Sox. And Karko Weiss is up at the plate, and he's going to ground out. So there's one down quickly for us. And Tim Raines Sr., Rock Raines, is up, and he's going to strike out. He's coming back to the bench to explain how Erickson got him on an outside fastball. And that's going to be a hit down into the corner for John Nunnally. And not only, I think that's his second double, isn't it? So he's two for two with two doubles. He came to play. He's not worried about the fact that we're not going to the playoffs. And this brings up Frank Thomas, and he's going to dribble it out in front of the plate. You don't want to see that with Big Frank because he doesn't have speed. So we get no runs, and what happens now is we're going to the bottom of the third in a tie game at one with Michael Tucker up against the McDowell man. And I have to be concerned with how my bullpen is, but we'll worry about that when it comes time to worry about that. Um, but Basulelioli is up, and he is going to ground out. And so there is two down quickly, and William Pinion is up with two away and nobody on. And he is going deep. Is that, is that out of here? No. No, it's a fly out, luckily. Calm down, everybody. It's just a fly out. And so it's 1-1 in the top of the fourth with Scott Erickson out there dealing to Franco down by the schoolyard. And he is going to maybe ground out. Yes, he does. The flip to Erickson is good. 
And so there is one down quickly with Robin High Ventura, Ventura Highway. He's up. Is he going to beat it out? No, there was no chance of that happening. And so there is indeed two down quickly with Lance Johnson up. And that is going to be, uh, looks like a ground out, and it is. And by the way, I probably won't have a dog bullpen because I believe we're after September 1st now. Gotta be. And so I should have every pitcher available to me now. And Andy Douse is the first guy who's going to greet McDowell here in the bottom of the fourth for the Twins. And that is not going to be in time. McDowell was a little late getting over there, so Douse is safe on the infield hit. Which brings up Pat Mears, luckily. Mears looks like he's trying to bunt, but uh, no, he goes back to just trying to swing away. And he does swing away, but he flies out to center field. So there's one down and one on. And Dave McCarty, left fielder. Did we get him this day? Yeah, this time we got him. And in fact, we did get him the first time, too. Karkovice with a really good... Uh, you know, cannon back there. So now there's two down, but then we walk McCarty. I don't know what the logic there was, but now Matt Wallbeck, the catcher, is up. And uh, no, I don't think we got him there. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, I was right about that, at least. So two down, and let's see. Come on, flip it in time, and he does. So... They don't do any other damage, the Twins don't. And we're going to the top of the fifth in a game that's tied at one. You might be seeing some extra baseball here. Not that you really want to see that between two bad teams that are just playing out the string. But, you know, it does happen. And, uh, you know, the games have to go on, right? And Ozzie Guillen is the batter with one down. And he is going to ground out to second base. So there's going to be two away pretty quickly. We haven't really done a lot of damage, but then again, neither have the Twins. And Carco Vice, who does have some power, is going to strike out. He's just going to walk back, put his gear back on, and go out there behind the plate to catch McDowell, who is apparently still okay. Um, as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and that's going to be a fly ball. Good. That's good. So then you got Alex Cole, the speedy center fielder for the Twins, up at the plate, and he walks. So now we're going to see how speedy he is. I'm going to try a pitch out, though. And the pitch out was just at the right time and got him. And so the Twins are trying everything. They are running like banshees out there. But, of course, why not? They're going to be the worst team in baseball and get the first draft pick, you would assume. So Jason Bassiale is up, and there's two down with a man at first base. And that's going to be a ground out to second. We're out of the inning, and we're going to the top of the sixth. In a game that's tied at one, Erickson's still out there. He'll be dealing to Reigns to lead off the first, and Reigns is going to come up with a base hit. Nice. And I'm not even going to try to steal. Reigns got a little speed even at this advanced age that he's at at this time, but Nunnally is two for two with two doubles, and he goes right back to the box, though, but Erickson's on it like a cat and throws out the lead runner at second base. So there is a man aboard at first base with one down and Big Frank up. And Big Frank is going to ground into a double play. So that's going to be it. We're going to the bottom of the sixth in a 1-1 game between Minnesota and Chicago. And McDowell deals and strikes out Pinion. And that brings up Andy Douse. Of course, the Twins, you got to figure, probably playing all of their, you know, guys that they would call up from the minors anyway. They got no motivation to try to win this game. Absolutely zero. I mean, really, we kind of have that exact thing, same thing. 
and mirrors, but we've got a little pride and we've got my managerial record on the line here that I don't want to go below 500 for any given season. Franco is up to lead off. We'd like a run. A run would be really great here in the seventh inning. And um, Ventura is up with one down. And there is two out. And with two outs, I am going to... I'm going to take a look at the bullpen. And uh, let's see. We're going to get somebody warming up and so you can see i do have the full complement of everybody who's ever been on the white Sox this season we're going to warm up uh dennis cook and then we're going to go back to the game action and we are going to deal to johnson or they're dealing to johnson and that is an out and we're out of the inning. Um, Cook is probably not warmed up yet, so I'm going to try to get uh, McDowell the first out or two. And that's going to be nice, nice play by Ventura to throw out the base, the uh, batter. And there's one down quickly with Wahlbeck, the catcher, up at the plate. And he is going to lace that thing down into the left field corner. But it's only going to be a single because Walbeck doesn't have the, uh, he's not the fleetest of foot. And here is Kent Herbeck. Kent Herbeck is a pinch hitter. He's a pinch hitter. I don't know why, but he is. So anyway, there's the uh, throw out at first. He's out. And, uh, oh, I forgot to bring in, I wanted to bring in Cook before that. But anyway, we did get out of the inning. He'll probably be tired when he gets ready to come back out, but I'll get somebody else up in the bullpen too. I can afford to do that since we have the expanded rosters. But there's a leadoff base hit by Felix Fermin. So he's aboard with uh, no outs. And Gian up, and Gian is going to ground into a double play, and now there's two out quickly. And um, I don't know, maybe Cook won't be dogged. Karkovice is up. And Karkovice is going to ground out, so we're out of this inning real quick. So let me take a look at the, uh, the bullpen. Cook is tiring, but we're going to bring him in tiring anyway. I mean, I do have my managerial record to think about but really the team is not playing for anything and cook gets a fly ball out of shane mack who was a pinch hitter himself and that brings up um kirby puckett the dh i think this is the first time i recall saying kirby puckett's name so yeah it looks like the twins are not only playing out the string, but they're playing out the string to lose the string. And uh, that's going to bring up Scott Leis. So now he is slowly, he is slowly seeping all of his starters into the game uh, by just pinch hitting them. And now Rojas is the new pitcher. Mel Rojas is the new pitcher, and he's pitching to Tim Raines. Of course, they probably weren't happy. I was playing pretty much my starters. Um, and they're going to talk about Rojas coming in. And that's a base hit. A leadoff base hit for Tim Raines Sr. So hopefully we can get a run, go ahead here, and then just uh, go home victorious with Nunnally, who has two doubles on the day. And is that a gone goodbye? It is. Nunnally is our star man today. He's got two doubles and a home run. This guy came to play. Of course, you know, I'm sure that the manager over there, Tom Kelly or whoever it is, is probably unhappy with me because I'm trying to win. And that would be the first out of the inning right there with uh, Julio Franco up. So we got a three to one lead. And uh, oh, that was just a man, that was a line out to the pitcher. Let me get somebody else up. I want to get... <laughs> I'm really trying to win this game. Uh, we're going to get Carl Willis up in the bullpen. So let me try to get him up and make him stick out there. 
So yeah, we're we're gonna pitch to Mel Rojas. Or Mel Mel Rojas is pitching to us, and that was a hit. So we got a hit in Ventura. No, Ventura is the guy who got the hit. Lance I'm all discombobulated coming back from the bullpen. Lance Johnson is up. Now he's been fighting some nagging injuries and he flies out thusly. So we're going to the, uh, let me see if he's ready yet. He is ready. So we're going to bring Carl Willis in to try to nail this thing down. So Carl Willis is the new pitcher and he's going up against Rich Becker. Now I remember Rich Becker too. So yeah, that's exactly what the twins did. They, they started mostly all their backups. But Rich Becker just doubled to the wall to lead off. And they're only down by two. It's not like they need a lot right here. They just need two runs, and they're right back in the game. But Andy Douse, they're not replacing Andy Douse. And he's going to pop out to short. One down with Pat Mears up and a man at first. And Pat Mears is going to ground out to first. So the Twins are down to their last out here, and uh, that brings up Dave McCarty. And Dave McCarty might have been real, but he strikes out, and so that appears to be the game. And it is. And so we get our big 3-1 to one win. We are 79-75 and 75 now. And I'll let you look at the... Uh, the box scores for a little bit. You can see the Twins did exactly what I said. They started all of their backups and their prospects and whatever, and then slowly factored everybody into the game uh, that was a, really a starter. And uh, meanwhile, I was going, you know, I was fighting fire with, uh, with uh, like a nuclear weapon because I had my starters out there right from the get-go. McDowell pitched seven. He gave up four hits and no earned runs. And then uh, Cook pitched an inning and Willis pitched an inning. And that will finish the day. And then uh, that's where we are, 79 and 75. Now only 17 games out. But that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.